we're talking about 30 million patients that present to EDs every year uh, for traumatic brain injury. There are physical things that we see, but there's also these invisible things that occur after traumatic brain injury. Namely, we have problems with patients having cognitive changes, meaning that they have, their thinking is different than what it used to be. And so that can be little things like slight behavior ch changes. It could be things like uh, they just don't think the way they used to think. They don't process things as fast as they used to. Uh, why that happens is related to the way the structure of the brain is, is actually injured, the actual physical injury that occurs, and how the, the, the brain actually has to rewire itself so these patients can get back to some semblance of normalcy. Um, other things that occur with these brain injuries that you wouldn't necessarily think about are things like PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, can actually be something that occurs after the structural injury that occurs after trauma. When you talk about doing research for that, it's, it's, it's complicated. It's very complicated. And when things are complicated, unfortunately, that usually means it costs more money to get these kinds of studies up and running and moving forward. Although we have some, some evidence, we don't have great research funding to make huge advances. As far as NIH funding is concerned, trauma, and specifically traumatic brain injury, is the lowest funded uh, research in the United States. Uh, we're talking on the order of just over $100 million of research funding for the entire volume of these patients. When you're talking you know, things like uh, uh, cardiac disease, we're talking billions of dollars that are funded, or cancer, billions of dollars. So it's a, a huge discrepancy. And ideally, what would happen is that we could have more robust studies. We could, you know, use some of this money to uh, really try to try to be innovative in our therapies, particularly at the earlier stages of trauma. Because what will happen uh, when a patient gets injured? There's these various phases that occur, you have the primary injury that occurs, which is the actual brain injury that happened from the accident or, or whatever it was. And then you have secondary injuries that can occur, and that's related to the body's response to that brain injury. So the brain swells, and you can have swelling that uh, affects you know, how the blood flow gets up to the brain. And, and these types of things actually will worsen brain injury as you're moving forward through the hospitalization. So it's those types of therapies that would be much more beneficial to patients and seeing better outcomes moving forward. I have a, a TBI study that I'm running right now looking at, at how we try to use diet to affect the inflammatory process in the brain. And there's actually some literature that supports that if you use a ketogenic diet, believe it or not, uh, in the acute phases that some of these patients might do better. It's certainly a signal that seems positive in, in lab animals. There seems to be a signal that's positive in other types of uh, non-traumatic brain injury like Alzheimer's disease, like Parkinson's disease, uh, epilepsy. Those things actually do benefit from having using just a ketogenic diet. And that's one of the things that my, my research is looking at is trying to figure out if we can do that for traumatic brain injury and if it will actually improve outcomes. The way that these things get better is by awareness and by you know passing the information along and we need to do things to actually have an effect, to make a positive change. And it's so important to be able to uh, move the needle on this.